Hi, a very good day to everyone. My name is Barkley Karnatki and I completed my Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery from Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College and I'm currently interning at the same, located in Belagavi, Karnataka, India. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So a brief idea about this YouTube channel is just to give everyone a gist about a few simple topics and help make it easier to learn and retain. So out of the list of a few topics, the first topic we will be actually talking and reviewing is cell injury. Now cell injury will be discussed under a few subheadings, namely what is cell injury, the types of cell injury, causes of cell injury, changes made to a cell when it undergoes injury and specific characteristics of each of the types of cell injury. So now let us start with what actually is cell injury. Cell injury is nothing but damage to the cell when the cells are under stress. It's very simple and very basic. This stress therefore makes it difficult for the cell to survive and adapt to its surroundings, therefore leading to death, reversible or irreversible changes, as we will see ahead. Now, there are two main types of cell injury one needs to keep in mind about when they actually go through this topic. One is reversible and the other one is irreversible. So first we will look at what is reversible cell death. Now, reversible cell death, the name itself is self-explanatory, right? Reversible means it can come back to its original state. So it is called reversible as the functional and morphological changes that a cell undergoes during this process, right, can be reverted. And this change can be reverted once the stimulus causing damage is removed. Now, on the contrary, we will look at what is irreversible cell damage. Now, irreversible, as I said before, has two main components necrosis and apoptosis. What is necrosis? Damage to the cell due to a harmful stimulus, a loss of ion homeostasis resulting in cell death is called necrosis. Now in necrosis, cellular contents actually leak through the plasma membrane. And once these contents leak through the plasma membrane, an inflammatory response is therefore set in order. Whereas if you look at apoptosis, apoptosis is more of a programmed cell death it is a process where the cell actually kills itself because the damage done to the cell's DNA and the proteins are beyond repair. There is complete nuclear dissolution of the cell, but membrane integrity is not completely lost. As a result, there is no leakage of proteins through the cell membrane and therefore no inflammatory process. So now after we have discussed the types of cell injury, let us look at a few causes of cell injury. First one, obviously oxygen. If there is oxygen deprivation, the cell won't be able to make energy, won't be able to metabolize and therefore will die or get injured. Next, we will look at are a few physical agents such as trauma resulting in cell injury. We can also have chemical agents such as arsenic, mercury, infectious agents such as any bacteria, immunological reactions as in necrosis where there is an immunological reaction once the proteins and the contents leak to the plasma membrane and genetic derangements. So now once the cell is injured or once the cell is set to go and follow the path of necrosis, there are a few changes made to the cell. Now these changes are visible on light microscopy, electron microscopy or histochemical ultrastructural techniques, right? So now these changes usually show up in minutes, but some can show up in hours. And as we expect irreversible cell injury, the changes will take much longer to show up than that of reversible cell injury. A perfect example of the time taken for changes to appear is in ischemia of the myocardium where swelling up of the cell occurs in a matter of minutes, whereas the progression to irreversible cell injury takes a couple of hours. Now we will look at the specific characteristics of reversible cell injury. It is characterized by generalized swelling of the cell and its organelles, blebbing of the plasma membranes, detachments of the ribosomes from the endoplasmic reticulum, therefore proteins won't be metabolized, clumping of nucleochromatin, and these changes are all obviously associated with decreased energy in the cell. And if the energy in the cell itself is less, the cell won't be able to function, right? There will be cytoskeletal damage as well as damage to the DNA. There are two things a doctor or a pathologist primary looks for under a microscope in order to determine whether there is presence of any reversible damage done to a cell. One is cellular swelling and the second is fatty change. Now cellular swelling, it appears when the cell is not able to maintain ion homeostasis and is the result of failure of energy dependent ion pumps in the plasma membrane. It can be difficult to visualize on light microscopy 
and it is more apparent at the level of the entire affected organ. So instead of us looking at a cell, we look at the whole organ. Whereas fatty change occurs in hypoxic injury and various other forms of toxic or metabolic injuries. So these are the specific characteristics of reversible cell injury. Now we will look at the few characteristics of irreversible cell injury, namely necrosis and apoptosis. Now necrosis, on a simple hematoxylin and eosin stain, the cells show increased eosinophilia. And once the process of necrosis is complete, the dead cells may be replaced by phospholipid masses called myelin figures. Now these myelin figures are actually derived from these damaged cell membranes and they precipitate and are finally phagocytosed or further degenerated into fatty acids. Now, once this happens, obviously the cell will not be able to function since it is dead. And the morphologic appearance, this appearance of necrosis is due to denaturation of intracellular proteins and enzymatic denaturation of lethally injured cells. Now, on electron microscopy, how does one figure out, you know, it's necrosis? There is discontinuity in the organelle membranes, swelling of the mitochondria with appearance of large amorphous densities, intracytoplasmic myelin figures, and debris of denatured proteins. Now we will look at apoptosis. What is apoptosis? We just know that it is programmed cell death, right? So now there is a pathway of cell death that is induced by a tightly regulated suicide program in which cells that are destined to die, which have no functionality and serve no purpose whatsoever, activate intrinsic enzymes that degrade cells' own nuclear DNA and their own cytoplasmic proteins. So this is a brief overview of cell injury, the types of cell injury, the causes of cell injury, and specific characteristics of each of the various types of cell injury. I hope this has made your understanding on cell injury a little easier. And uh, thank you so much and have a great day.